Before you watch this 10 minute video, I'd just like to say that you will not learn to play the banjo or any other instrument in 10 minutes. It takes practice and lots of it. In these short tutorials, I'm only showing the techniques and it's up to you to do the hard work, but it is worth it to learn to play classic style banjo. In the previous videos, we've set up and tuned your banjo. Now let's see if we can learn how to play it. Firstly, let's check the tuning. Mine is tuned to concert pitch, so yours should sound the same. C. G. B. D. And top G. Please take the time to download the attached files with this video. These contain tutor books, exercises, chord sheets, which are all used with the video. If you do want to learn more about the classic style of playing, I strongly recommend that you buy the new Clifford Essex Music Company tutor book, The Banjo and How to Play It. It is an amalgamation of the finest tutor books from the past and with a modern interpretation, even including the use of tablature throughout. Now let's look at the correct way to hold the banjo. Classic style banjo is normally played while seated. The banjo sits on the right thigh and is pressed firmly against the body. The right forearm presses on the armrest and stops the banjo neck falling downwards. The left arm comes out straight from the body, straight in front and up to the first position. This means that when you bend your elbow, the elbow bends the correct way to come up the fingerboard. Some banjo players play with the banjo on the lap. Now I don't like this position because for a start it's more difficult to hold the banjo with your forearm but also your elbow bends the wrong way to go to the first position. But taking it back onto the right thigh everything is now feels nice again. The neck is also twisted very slightly towards you so that you can actually look across the fretboard to see the fret position markers. Now we know how to hold the instrument correctly, let's go to the right hand and look at the correct hand position and shape. Many players have come to classic style banjo after playing other classical stringed instruments and they're very talented musicians. But to me, the sound that they produce is just not quite how classic banjo should sound. I don't know why it is, it might be the hand shape, it may be the picking style, I can't really work it out. But just take a moment to listen to early classic style banjo players and see if you can notice anything. Having listened to the recordings, you can notice that they all have a vibrancy and brightness to the sound, also a strong attack, and this to me is how classic style should sound. The attack comes from the way the strings are picked. I was fortunate enough to have been taught classic banjo by Chris Sands, who is probably the world's finest classic banjo player, and Tarrant Bailey Jr, recording artist and performer, taught Chris. Hopefully, I've inherited just a little of the traditional classic banjo right hand style. The hand style is described as economical, uh, enabling fast runs of notes, arpeggios, triplets that feature in many classic banjo solos. And these are played often with a minimal movement of the hand. finger on the vellum about an inch from the bridge. This puts the first two picking fingers of the right hand approximately three inches from the bridge. The strings are picked with the tips of the fingers, not the fingernails. This is why the fingernails are kept short. This gives the distinctive sound. If you 
put a slight arch in your wrist. This tips the thumb slightly downwards to give the correct striking angle onto the bass strings, which is downwards, not sideways. To form the picking hand, keep the fingers out straight in line with the back of the hand and just bend at the centre joint of the fingers. Then just a little bend downwards. Now that, I don't know if you can see, is the picking shape for classic style. This economical style allows chord arpeggios to be played with minimal movement of the fingers. Not only can chord arpeggios be played quickly, but triplets are very easy and quick to do too. Initially the picking may sound a bit woolly, but the brightness will soon come as the skin on the fingertips hardens and you start to develop calluses on the tips of the fingers. This starts to give you the true classic banjo sound to the notes. When you're first starting, here's a tip to help develop these uh, grooves in your fingers. Put your fingers on the strings with the, the tips of, the, of your two fingers, picking fingers of your right hand, and your thumb on the fourth string, and just rub hard. What this does, it will put lines into the tips of your fingers, I don't know if you can see them, but these make it's much easier to pick. Now let's move to the left hand. It's important that the banjo neck doesn't rest in the U between the thumb and the first finger of the left hand. If you hold it like this you will find it very difficult to reach your fingers to the correct position on the fretboard. It should be held with the thumb just pressing on the back of the neck with a lot of air space between your fingers and they just wrap over the top to the chord positions. This method of keeping the thumb on the back of the neck and wrapping the fingers around to the fretboard makes the hand sit nicely so that you can reach the chords. If you feel you're having trouble playing chord shape, you're probably not holding the neck properly. Now we've looked at the correct right hand position, let's just try picking the open strings. Don't play the fifth, which is the octave string on the side, or the fourth, which is the bass string. We're only going to concentrate at the moment on the third string, second string and first string. So with the thumb pick the third string, with the first finger of the right hand, put the second string, and with the second finger, first string. Now we'll do that again, but this time we'll do the third, second, first, and then bring the thumb back to the fifth string. It'll take a while to get used to this hand position, but practice, practice and practice and you can, until you can play these at a reasonable speed. simple rolls, you weren't picking the same string twice with the same finger. You were alternating your fingers. Now this is an important part of classic banjo playing. Alternate fingering is very important to get the speed that you will need when you are playing a banjo solo. 
Initially, it feels a little awkward and a little difficult, but when you get uh, used to alternate fingering, your solos will sound much better, and of course, they will also feel much better to you. We will go on to practice more alternate fingering, but before we do, let's just talk about chords and chord shapes. Most classic banjo music is played using a small number of standard chord shapes. Without knowing any of the note names, or even knowing the chord names, it is quite possible to play classic style banjo by numbers. The 13 basic chord shapes shown on the chord number sheet are the most frequently used in classic style, and they are mostly simple three finger chords. Let's work through the 13 chord shapes. These chords are in no particular order, as it is only necessary for us to learn their shapes and their numbers. I can hear the muttering from the music theorists already. In part two of this video, we will have a further look at chords and practice some alternate fingering exercises which will incorporate them.